Hello, everyone, and welcome to Those Forking Fangirls, where we talk all things nerdy book culture, fandoms, and how they integrate into our adult lives. I'm Natasha. And I'm Christine. And you said culture and not pop culture. I'm just gonna you know, I wasn't, I wasn't on the exact where I was saying it from, and I had to, like, frantically scroll up because I forgot that I was starting. Um, so, pop culture, and today we're doing... <laughs> A continuation of our previous episode that we uh, did with Taya, prob- actually last year at this time, um, and it has been requested again by our patrons, and this is going to be the Millennial versus Gen Z c- discussion continuation. Well, okay, let me just clarify. <laughs> it's not like a versus. This is like <laughs> right. this is a continuation We're discussion of of generations and the differences and we're going to be looking at some of the other generations today and looking at new words and new emoji translations that have evolved and all of that fun stuff (laughs) uh our patron elise suggested that we do a part two of that discussion and we bring on we have chloe here today our social media manager and another Gen Z to give that point of perspective, point of, re- point of view, Wait, perspective. Can I, can I say something so funny? Yes. So Taya and I are friends now, which is wonderful. And we actually texted about the fact that all our friends are millennials kind of recently and how, so I, I needed to read this out because it's so funny, genuinely. I said... We, she said, bitch, let's go. And I said, yes, yes, yes. And then she responded, hot. And I said, I love that we speak the same. <laughs> All our friends with peace and love are old. And she said, so true. And that's why we love them with a little written out heart. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, recently I made so while Natasha was in New Zealand, I found that I talked to myself a lot more because I talked to her every day. And you also texted I'm me more. <laughs> I texted Chloe more. I okay. So anyway, I was having these thoughts about like millennials and I didn't have anywhere to put them. So I made a little TikTok discussing like how millennials are kind of, we'll discuss this, like they're perpetually roasted by all the generations instead of it like rotating out to the next generation. You spent all last episode making fun of the way I speak. I, I just want to say, was, you okay. were repeating what I said, and you were like, oh, you're Gen fun. Z-isms. I know, but yeah. I'm just saying, you also no. dish out a yeah. little bit, well, okay? You know why it is, though? It's because <laughs> I've been dished on that I've been looking. Okay, you know what I realized? Okay, so I rewatched Hacks, which the first season came out in 2021, and I love uh, the receptionist in Hacks. I don't know if y'all have watched it, but no. she's the boss's daughter, and she doesn't know anything about being a receptionist for an agent. And I didn't know at the time that she was talking like Gen Z and having like a very Gen Z sense of humor, but she's so fucking funny. And she's like so annoying to the agent because <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing, but like, she's hilarious. And she talks like you. <laughs> oh, so you think I'm funny. Okay. No, and I do think you're funny, obviously. <laughs> but it was hilarious to me that when I was rewatching, I was like, oh my God, she talks just like <laughs> <laughs> I need everyone to go back and watch the Avatar episode on YouTube and watch the Book Boyfriend episode, and you will see Christine bullying me a little bit. Okay. There's a difference <laughs> between bullying and just like. I use it interchangeably. Roasting. Yes. It's not. Yes. It's different, though, because roasting is my love language and bullying is not. <laughs> I also think it's funny that we're doing this episode because. Two weeks ago about, I think, you texted me and you were like, are we not supposed to use emojis anymore? Because you were texting that guy. And you were like, should I use emojis? (laughs) And I was like, um, yes, but like it is, people don't use emojis. (laughs) I have some dating app updates in the tea time today. (laughs) 
I was oh, Christine's too. ghost writer for a little. <laughs> for one text, I needed some help. <laughs> we talked about it, I think, in the last few time you were on, though. Oh, yeah, but, yes. Yeah, so we will be digging into emojis today. What, what, when we should use them, which ones we shouldn't use anymore, what means what to what generations. Um, Chloe, did you have something to say? No, I have something to say. Oh, I thought you. Okay. I I Natasha. just feel I just feel like the awkward middle child here because <laughs> you are. <laughs> like I I I. I relate to both sides since I'm a 1994 baby and I'm so close to each, but I'm like, it's just You're weird. I don't like being yeah. at the, the cusp because I'm like, I get it. I want to talk like Chloe does. Like, it's so cute. I love, I love how you like, I like how Chloe talks her. too. No, I, you like, can't. Nope. Excuse me, I just said that. I thought it was so funny. And I couldn't put my finger on, like, why? I love I you, realized. Natasha. Thank you. Excuse Thanks. me, I feel like now that I'm, be, like, saying that I don't like it, but I'm not. I love it. It's so, it's this, like, radiant positivity in anything that is said that is so hilarious. Yeah. Like, I, think, I think that might be like me plus Gen Z because like yeah, I yeah. refuse to be negative about things like I don't I don't think it ever nears toxic positivity and if it does no, like please no. fucking tell me it's like ugh. it's c- comedy in a way like yeah. it, so I want you to watch hacks it's <laughs> comedy <laughs> it is comedy <laughs> I want you to watch Hacks because even if she's fucking everything up, she's like, yeah, slay. Like, <laughs> yeah, real, real. <laughs> Me, every time I get um, Natasha's username wrong, I'm like, oh, oops. <laughs> Literally. Slay. Like, okay, anyone who's watched Hacks, please confirm it for me. Okay, I will watch Hilarious. it for you. I will she's watch so it. I need to watch funny. It now. She's my favorite character. She's played by um, Megan. Some I can't remember her last name, but she also makes a lot of funny videos on Instagram. Um, anyway, okay. So we're going to get into that. But first, Snow Crackle Pop Culture News. We've been off for a week, so a lot has happened. The first being, I don't know if this is the first, but like there was a solar eclipse. Did anyone <laughs> watch it? I slept through it. <laughs> oh my god honestly valid though because i'm you being alert and awake right now impressive okay oh thank you <laughs> yeah like and you look gorgeous like if i came back from new zealand i'd be like fuck off i'm not doing anything i'm gonna be rotting in my bed for the next three days like when i came I back think- from india by the way i did the exact same thing i just rotted yeah i mean i got back home like sunday morning and then i had like all day sunday tuesday oh believe me christine texted me she's like do you want to do the podcast on monday i was like um i need i need like a day no i chill the fuck out for tuesday (laughs) okay i did not say that (laughs) you interpreted my text very loud when it was just do it on monday you you interpreted my text really loud christine you are really loud loud. (laughs) i know but that i was not saying loudly i just needed to get it on the schedule here's the thing i could just feel her being like i need to get on the podcast i need to talk i have all these things that are brewing i need to talk about and so that's how i was interpreting it i'm like because that was like the second thing she asked me she's like yay you're home when do you want to do the podcast (laughs) For such a yapper, like I'm surprised you don't spend more send more voice memos. Like I I would expect you to send voice memos. She Is calls. That, you call. call. Oh, I'm I call, not. You know what? I was going to text you when Natasha wasn't here because I was like, because I'm your second she choice. Be a- <laughs> No, no, no. I was like, because we were talking over text, and I was like, is Chloe like a friend I can call? Yes. But I don't know if you like to call. I love calls. <laughs> I love calls. Yes. Because I'll you know what I can do on a call? List. I can like clean and I can like mm-hmm. dawdle Meet. around. Okay. I love a Natasha call. I actually and I don't were on like a call that. for three Basically. hours. Yeah. Last yeah. Night. And just you don't even have to talk. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to really talk all the time. You can just exist together. I fucking love that yes okay you me. you'll be on my call rotation because i do I call my closest friends and i don't never know like when i can bring you oh in oh my god romantic <laughs> you can bring me in oh, romantic. you're invited to my birthday party celebrations which low-key like are small so 
we're there. So we're mine. I know. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big <laughs> you know deal. What? So anyone like who is making new friends in a new place, I just this is like a big tip. When you get invited to the birthday, if you don't go, they take it as like we're not friends. So I'm terrible at like bringing people like I have acquaintances and then I have my really close friends and I'm terrible at like the middle because I don't know how to uh, bridge the yes. gas. That's and, like, so little- real. And I'm so introverted that, like, when it's someone that I don't know a lot of their friends, if I get invited to their birthday party, it's hard for me to be like, I'm going to (laughs) go. And so I've lost out, I feel like, on, like, potential friendships not making it to those birthdays. (laughs) And then forever it's like, oh, they didn't like me because they were trying to bridge the gap. And it, it just, just try to make an effort to go to your new friend's birthdays. Yeah, birthdays are important to people Mm -hmm. for sure. And also, it's just, it is that, like, easy way to, like, bring that yeah. new friend into a new level. And if they don't come, you're like, oh, they don't want that. Also, new. what happens if their friends are cooler and you meet their friends and then you get to hang out with their friends? Like, that's amazing, yeah. That happens no, to me all the time. Really nice. Yeah. Everyone, no. I am the matriarch of all the friends and everyone just pairs off and they, they're like, oh, I like you. And you can be my okay, friend you're now. You're still the coolest, though. Uh, no, I know that. Oh, I know. Okay. I know. I'm really cool. That's that's. I'm very validated in that. That everyone. Yeah. We all share the same friends now. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. We, Natasha has brought new friends into my life, one thousand percent. Me mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. She's we were the talking outgoing about the butterfly. Eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> we oh, the best the thing eclipse. to come out of the eclipse was Twilight memes. Taylor Swift. Twilight. The resurgence. Oh. oh no, no, the resurgence of Twilight memes and Twilight Internet. It was amazing. Okay. The last time there was an eclipse, it was around the time that Reputation was dropping. So there were all these theories that like Taylor Swift was gonna have like eclipse as her album like oh. theme. <laughs> I'm I was so, graduating high mind. school, I think, last time there was. Yeah. Well, 2017. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was in college. I was in college because okay. Reputation came out when I was in college November. and I used to yeah, walk yeah, yeah. to my 7 a.m.s listening to it. Nice. Oh. Nice. Okay. So there was an eclipse. I didn't watch it in real life, but I did watch a video on TikTok of the whole thing in Texas and it was so <laughs> cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was like, incredible. It's, I mean, science and our world is really cool. Yeah. I Hot was tank. scared cool. of like seeing it with my eyes. Even when I saw a video, I was like, am I allowed to look at this? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> of course you would say that. <laughs> We're the opposite. Cause I was like, what if I just go and look? I was so no, tempted. Why? I was so tempted. Don't I didn't, do that. I'm not blind. I didn't. I'm just saying that like, I, I read I a book of, once called Tangerine where the kid was blind and we didn't know exactly why and we all thought it was because he looked at an eclipse <laughs> maybe oh it's like in sixth grade <laughs> okay let's move on from the eclipse because there's a lot more and i forgot there's about this natasha this is for you i put it down yeah for thank you, you. I for- I'm, I'm so me. excited <laughs> okay <laughs> I am too. so there's been a lot of new bridgerton promo that yes! they have dropped and i think it was at actually at the la- our last episode where we turned off the cameras and i'm like <gasps> there's new bridgerton stuff that just came out <laughs> 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 and yes. so we got a promo so i haven't read the book guys and I, i'm not going to read it until after the show but i do know about this mirror scene as it has um mm-hmm. now been widely talked about and i am so excited to see this i i'm so excited too i think this is going to be the spiciest season so that's far. what they, that's what they said, keep saying yeah and she said it's going to be very romantic and that because we've mm-hmm. watched these characters like uh, be, be, they're they're friends and yeah they and already know we, each other they yeah. know each other and we mm-hmm. know them like i don't think i mean yeah like we have seen this happen in tv shows before but it's usually like the two main characters and now that like i love how we get to see every single new couple in each new season yes. it's just gonna be so satisfying um but there's a promo of um like the two of them like her giving him the cold shoulder and then there's another promo of um of Colin like putting his hand on her shoulder I'm just like ah I keep rewatching them and then <laughs> And then there is the promo that then they did share a little tiny itsy bitsy baby clip of we what well, we all think is the beginning of the mirror scene. Mm-hmm. And he's like she's looking at herself in the mirror and he's coming up behind her. 
I'm so excited. I am so excited. All of these promos. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. They're such, they're teasing us. Yeah. But I feel like this entire season is going to be a tease until, like, you know, just because it is difficult. Like, she's feels like kind of rejected by him and she's upset. Like, I feel like the buildup is going to be a very, well, I mean, every season. I don't know. She said there's so much sex. Well, yeah, it's like, no, 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 no. I, I'm so excited about that. Also, it's so validating that, like, the plus size romantic girl lead is getting the sexiest mm-hmm. and most romantic season. Like, fuck yes. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that is amazing. And I don't know if I've ever seen that. I don't I'm know if I've honestly for- ever seen plus size sex on TV. Yeah, it's like good sex good sex but I, I honestly don't even know if i've seen bad plus size sex on tv like i'm so excited yeah. i I'm, I'm excited for colin to redeem himself because he's me been, too he looks i don't gorge. like gorge so, yeah but they just did the bridgerton effect on him though and he's so yes now. why did he get so much hotter they, it's, it's, they it do that every time that's, yeah that's what they do <laughs> it happens every time <laughs> i don't know how they're gonna make benedict even more hot because he's already he's spicy. already yeah He's already cutie patootie. Should we move on to the next thing or Natasha, you have more to comment on? Oh, we can move on. All right. So there's new music coming. Billie Eilish has a new album coming at the beginning of May called like Come At Me Hot and Cold, which mm-hmm. I'm very excited oh. about. I didn't know that I was a top Billie Eilish fan, but I got an email from Spotify being like, for top really? fans. Oh, I didn't know that about you. Exclusive offer. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> Gen Z of you. <laughs> <laughs> I big fan of both albums they're like my like i put them on a listen and repeat they're like some of the ones i only ones i have downloaded so on the plane mm. i just have them on repeat playing music got it yeah but also regular i wrote my whole second book to um billy's album before the happy album which i'm blanking on when i all fall asleep where do we go mm-hmm. um and love that one and love all the dances that were on youtube to that album oh okay anyway it's coming Sabrina Carpenter also has a new single coming called Expresso. It's coming out before her Coachella set, which is happening. I love her fairly so soon. I think much. Oh yeah, like in a week now. Yeah, because yeah, because it's right before Stagecoach, and I'm going yes. to Stagecoach. Yes. I am so excited. I would let Sabrina Carpenter step on me in her like eight inch heels, and yeah. I would say thank you so much. Do it again. Mm-hmm. I love you. Mm-hmm. I just she's perfect. She's, she's perfect. Very sweet. And yeah. very fun. I talked to her a couple Polly times. Polly Pocket so pop cool. star. <laughs> we met her on the set of um, The, the Hate You Give. Give and mm-hmm. talked to her. It was really cool. She's really. I hate when you guys say cool shit. Like, it just drives me crazy. <laughs> you just, every once in a while, we're hanging out or, like, we're doing the pod and you drop this, like, really cool thing. And I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you. Okay. <laughs> but also show me pictures. <laughs> I don't think um, I, do I don't have think pictures? We, we have video because they, we video. they were like we'll That's take cool it too. of you. That's cool too. <laughs> I just like damn. Uh, I love her. Yeah, she's great. And Cowboy Carter Beyonce's oh, new oh. album just came out. Do you all have thoughts? Yes. 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 So Tell us. I downloaded it because uh, it came out the day I was leaving. I think mm-hmm. so. I downloaded it and I listened to it like on the plane and um in uh, in New Zealand. And I have lots of thoughts. I'm not a country girl, but I love this album. Mm -hmm. And my favorite song is the one she does with Miley Cyrus. It's so (gasps) fucking good. Me too. Two Most Wanted. It is so good. It is my Mm -hmm. top on Spotify on repeat right now. I just keep re-listening to it. It is so good, Natasha. I fucking love you. You're so right. (laughs) It is incredible. I am thrilled about this album. Mm-hmm. I People were saying it's mediocre. Fuck those people. What? <laughs> you are so that. wrong. I love country music. Like, I am a country music girl. I grew up on it. I grew up on traditional country, which is, this is very far from that. And I still love this album. It is so mm-hmm. beautiful. It feels really raw and transparent. Mm-hmm. When I first listened to the, her version of Jolene, because it's like a new version, it's really not a cover. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was, my jaw was dropped. Me and my best friend Kayla were listening to it into the car and we were like, holy shit, this is so intense. And mm-hmm. my favorite thing to come out of it is the memes where everyone's like, <laughs> no one wants Jay-Z, babe. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's so true but yeah. no I loved it so much two most wanted and Levi's jeans have been Levi's on jeans. repeat mm-hmm. for me they're so mm-hmm. good and they just like made me feel sexy mm-hmm. I have different songs that stand out to me but I no, I us. like those as well but okay so I listened to it like a few days ago and I was like oh my god I haven't listened to Cowboy Carter I put it on while I'm getting ready and I hadn't even looked at the track list and Amer- it's American long. I really liked American Requiem and I'm Mm. listening to it. I'm like, this Mm -hmm. is giving Sergeant Pepper's um, Lonely Hearts and Band. Like really, that really giving the Beatles. And then after that song goes, I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. Like this isn't country really. This feels like Beatles rock vibe. Yeah, there was a lot of rock inspired. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes into Blackbird and my jaw was on the floor. I was like, wait. Is the continuity <laughs> pop off? Yeah, no, she, it was so really good. Excited. But um, after talking, I talked to a uh, Heather, Natasha's Heather, um, about Beyonce a bunch in the car on the way to her birthday, and she was telling me about how her next album is going to be a rock album. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, and then I heard Pam talking about it on Millennial too, yeah. mm-hmm. and. It's really interesting how, like, I think she was theorizing that, like, Look that is up. made to go right into the rock album. Like, yeah. it would flow right into it from that track. I think it might be a part two. Like, I think it might be, or I guess it's technically yeah, part it, three. It was like, part two. Yeah, it's like, there's four so parts part of Renaissance, yeah. Yeah. as Heather mm-hmm. was explaining to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited for the rock album because I love those vibes. So American Requiem was one of my favorites. Um, and then I really loved the Blackbird cover. That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I I love Texas Hold'em when that comes out. Oh, yeah. Like, no, it's oh, so yeah. good. The singles <laughs> so good. are so good. Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages 16 are incredible. 16 Carriages. Oh, yeah. Always stuck in my dancing head. dancing around. And I also really liked Yaya. And yeah. um, I was really excited for Riverdance because I love Riverdance. Yes. <laughs> I also like love Riverdance. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Yeah, Riverdance vibes. <laughs> I was like, Wait, Riverdance? Can I say something maybe chaotic? Yes. Sure. Natasha, you look like you did Irish dancing when you were younger. I know you didn't, <laughs> but you kind of have that look. I don't um, know what that means, but I feel it in my soul. Oh, Is I it love the that. bows? Make, no, no. Like the big, the, I think it's, it's the, the big, big hair. hair, big curly oh. hair, the bows. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, I feel like I mean, like I could picture you doing a jig and me loving it. Also, you used sparkles? to watch Lord of the Dance. Like I fucking loved. Mm-hmm. That I had two friends who did do Irish dancing, like in school. So I did my birthday photo shoot. I don't know why I just thought of this. Um, and Danielle was f- like f- photographing me, and I was like flailing my legs, and she was like, "Oh, it's like." It's like Christine. <laughs> she was like, f- like photographing you is like photographing Christine. And I was like, we were, I was like, we were both dancers. So we do this weird ass shit. <laughs> weird leg flopping. No, my leg was like up here and my arm was out there. And like, I, I'll, sh- I'll send you some like videos and pictures. I, you, wait, I, were you on a stool or something? Because I was on a stool. I was on the I was floor. Like, I was like back <laughs> with like my feet up straight. <laughs> oh, I've seen those pictures. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot. You're yeah, you texted me manager. and you were like, you were like, don't use those. And I was like, why would I use these? <laughs> For what? Um, all right. So Cowboy Carter. Very good. I'm excited to listen to it more because I haven't listened to it enough to like yeah, pull same. more out. Um I've just been re-listening to my favorite songs over and over again. Maybe we listen to it on the way to Disney. Yeah. The same Texas. Woo! <laughs> um, uh, my favorite part of that song is just being like, yeah! Yeah, <laughs> me too. I have to do that lasso move I, when I'm in the car. I'm not, and yeah. I'm sure there's someone that has passed me and been like, what the fuck is that girl doing? I'm, I'm like, always yeah! Yeah! So I think 
everyone's always like, what the fuck is she doing? <laughs> I think we did. We went to, we went line dancing the week it came out. And I was like, are they going to play that? That's so dancing? fun. Uh-huh. Can I come next time? I'll yeah. I really want to go too. I want to so go much. line dancing. Okay. Well, you know, I've given the option many times. Not you, Chloe. Um, this, this is I only got thing. the option one okay. time. You got it twice. <laughs> Once. No, on your birthday, you were gonna. We were gonna go, and then last last on my birthday weekend, oh. and you said I don't want to go. No, wait. You're talking about my birthday or your yeah. birthday? Your birthday and my. My birthday. birthday. It was because I was quarantining for Taylor Swift, <laughs> and I could not be sick. True. <laughs> <laughs> I had hardcore rules for myself leading up to that concert. Well, <laughs> Molly's got... now staying with me, so we'll probably go maybe this weekend. I've got some more news. So the book that I wrote called Attached at the Hip is coming out next month, May 21st, 2024. And yeah. it was in a Ooh. magazine this week in print. This girl magazine? had like was it a, this girl or girl's world girl oh, life? girl's life girl's life girl's life girl's life because i remember i used to read it so yeah. it's girl's life mm-hmm. and there they have like a little spread of like six books that should be on your tbr and totes to match them and attached to the hip is in it and i was like oh my god this is so cool that's <laughs> so cute i fucking love magazines i miss that shit i miss 17 i miss teen vogue like <laughs> and it's so no. random here's a book you should read and a tote bag to match I, like i match- love shit like that <laughs> It's going to be like, online, too, so I will share the link when it's online. <laughs> um, I will be buying the tote. Thank you very much. <laughs> to match Cal-Pak my attached tote. to the hip. I love Calpac. I was like, Whoa, should I that's buy cool. Yeah. yeah, you should. <laughs> so anyway, attached at the hip is available for pre-order. Pre-orders are super important to the launch, if you haven't heard my spiel. But they they really really are so i'm so excited about this book there are events that i will be announcing soon but i still don't have like the green light for like the full event list so i'm waiting um hurry it's a survivor-esque rom-com the lead is 23 she goes on this reality show and she ends up attached to the hip via eight feet of rope to her high school crush that she hasn't seen in four years and it is a fun fun ride anyway that link to that is in the description show notes and love uh, love thanks speaking of love love uh, love stereo tickets are still on sale for friday and saturday uh i obviously took the week off because i was in new zealand so i am back at it this week trying to secure authors and we'll hopefully have updates soon about who will be attending i'm so excited we all are and Today on Taylor Swift, uh, she dropped four playlists, one for your, each of, like, the first four stages of grief and has songs from, like, all her, like, other albums that go along with the sentiment. And a lot of those songs are from Lover. A lot of them, for denial, yeah. are in Lover. Like, yeah. And it's really sad. <laughs> like, she was I've in been the- there. When, yeah, when, I, I when I saw that, I was like, oh... Yeah, I experienced that. Cool. Yeah. Hate hate that so much, mm-hmm. but it's fine. Yeah. It's um sad uh times looking at the list of songs that are I on still the tolerate playlists. it is still banned for me. I can't listen to that song without mm. crying. Mm. So Yeah. Everyone we'll see. like has loves to be like, Yeah, she won't tolerate it. Uh when I talk about how like folklore is about yeah. like her Joe thing. But tolerate it is about a different relationship. Like she talks about how she was like so young and I don't mm-hmm. it's I feel like that was more of like a John Mayer, Jake Gyllenhaal time. I I agree. I agree with yeah. you. I just I just think that it physically wounds me every time I oh. listen to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it's so, a great song. Oh, well, you guys know this. I was going through a breakup when Era's, like, the movie came out. And mm-hmm. I went to see Era's, the movie. The first time I saw it in theaters, though, I couldn't watch all of it. Aww. Tolerate happened. I started dry heaving in the movie oh. theater next oh to, like, an gosh. eight-year-old. Oh, you know? No. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go. 
I'm gonna go and oh. I'm gonna watch it in a couple months when I'm fully healed. And I did, and it was fine. But I for sure scarred this eight year old. She was like having the time of her life, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I left. Oh that's how i am with marjorie like oh, oh my I can't, god i yeah. can't with that so i didn't know like it was about her grandma and then for long and then i just kept listening and then she started playing it on tour and i'm like oh god, god. <laughs> I, see that song it was so crazy to me it started playing and i instantly knew that it was about like a dead grandparent and i like got so emotional yeah but you and, have that weird connection with her yeah that is- yeah i know and i like completely connected it to like my relationship with my grandparents and then like i tried to play it for my mom and she like it just went right over her head i was like this you are so deep song. so christine like you <laughs> other people simply cannot grasp the level to which you understand taylor swift i know it's 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 a thing it's a uh, thing it is we're on the same wavelength um <laughs> but yeah i love that song so much all right should we move on to what right now yes yes what right now what have we been reading this week <laughs> nothing i've been on vacation nothing <laughs> Chloe, um, been reading anything. Natasha has been living a real uh, living a book. Let's be real. <laughs> she has. Um, yes. I finished Akatar, the whole oh. series. Oh, oh my god, gosh. that's right. The Silver Flames so picture. I, Silver Flames was my favorite. Oh, um, yeah. I was freaking out. Um because you, Christine, when we went, when we did the Love Stereo photo shoot, you were talking about how you want to be Nesta. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? She wants to be Nesta? Like, that's a lot. <laughs> it's like a little cuckoo bananas. It still is, but I love her so much now. Um, and I asked people on my story, and a lot of our listeners swiped up trying to give me advice on whether or not I should start Crescent City or Throne of Glass flirt first. So I wanted to ask the two of you, because you're my experts, like, which one mm-hmm. I should do. There was like a lot of advice happening. So what do you guys think? It depends on your mindset right now because I'm gonna read a book in between. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, a yeah. Romance because sometimes little. you wanna take away get away from the yeah. world for a little bit and come back. Um, Throne of Glass is amazing. Like, but a lot of people um who don't have any patience well, both of them require patience. Um <laughs> <laughs> Um, but a lot of people who don't have any patience have trouble getting to where it gets amazing. And that okay. is book three. Mm-hmm. And like, it's about the middle of book three where everything starts coming together and you're like, fuck. Um, <laughs> and, um, so keep that in mind. Crescent city is definitely more dense, but Crescent city is fucking amazing. But the second book is hard to get through. People mm-hmm. were telling me read first and second of Crescent city, then read of throne, of, then read throne of glass and then go back and read the third of Crescent city. You could do that. That's kind of what I did. Make, it's going to yeah. make the third one just cause there make are like sense. a lot of nods. Um, it. it's going to, you're going to pick up on them and get excited. Um, mm. if you know all of Throne of Glass. Yeah. It was, the book release were divided. Like 50 people responded and it was like half and half. And I was like, fuck, I don't know I'm what to do. I'm always like publication order, but you've already broken publication order. So it's like, where do you want to go? Oh. Next? <laughs> yeah. You're like, well, you did it wrong already. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I've only read the first and second Throne of Glass and I, I got to Air of Fire and I, I hit that point where I was like, ah, so. Um, well, because it's high fantasy, right? It's not they're all no, romantic. It's, it's, it's romantic. It's, it's not, it doesn't feel so high fantasy because no, it's very no, like she's... Game of Thronesy in the beginning where like it's medieval. One of mm-hmm. the guys I'm talking to is like telling me about this high fantasy book and I'm like, hmm. Mm. Sounds good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Shall know what? It does actually hand. sound good. Brandon Sanderson. Oh, I know, yeah, but it, 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 is it, it is good. Is he telling you about Mistborn? The Way no, of King. Oh, the, the Way of Kings is the other one. Yeah, Mistborn is really. Good. I put it on my TBR. We'll see. Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, Christy and I have different opinions because she read all Throne Glass first and then Crescent City. I fucking love the first Crescent City book. It is so good. I do too. 
It's so like say. if you want if you like need something that's just as good after Silver Flames, I would go mm-hmm. straight into Crescent City. Okay. And then maybe I would and then I can stop get the motivation. Okay. And then go into Throne of Glass after that. Okay. Throne of Glass is one of my favorite series of all time. Like it is next to Harry Potter. I know, I know it is so too. good. So like I'll do it. Don't worry. I, and it's it's like when I, I talk let about you down. it's like I when I talk about the down. mortal instruments for some reason because people like have trouble with the first two books, but then the mm. third book is like fucking amazing, and then you're like, oh wait, this is amazing. Um, but I loved them all from the beginning. <laughs> well, thank you for the tangent. I appreciate it. I will update everyone on what I do. Yes, keep us in the loop. Um, <laughs> I read just for the summer. Abby Amena's new book. Oh, yeah. Yes. You loved it. Oh, my God. I devoured those books in, like, two seconds. And at the end, I'm just like, oh, now what I read. <laughs> I've run out. <laughs> um, it was really cute, really good. I still, my favorite is Part of Your World. That is, like, my the first Abby Jimenez book I'll remember yeah. to anyone. It's so good and so wonderful in every way. And... Um, this book is good too, but there are like just not as many moments where I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so good stuff. Good stuff. Definitely read just for the summer. I love Abby Jimenez and I have, I have the audiobook for Iron Flame and I've been making my way through it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Only took a billion fucking years, by the yeah. way. I just don't love the voices. I like yeah. the voices in my head the so much better. Like my turn is so much more fun than their turn. I was like, <laughs> I, I love I fucking Taren love Grumpy so Taryn. I love Grumpy Taryn, but my Grumpy Taryn voice is so much better. Who's than- your Grumpy Taryn voice? It's a voice that I made up in my head. It's I like Sam Hewen, right? Yeah, it's like a grumpy, like the Witcher Sam Hewen voice. Mm-hmm. Oh, and my yeah. body was Taren like is, Morgan is Witcher. Vibes. Witcher, but like no, I'm talking about the audiobook. He sounds like an old man. Oh, oh, well, he is an old man. He yeah, but like a he very sounds like old. a mean old man instead of like a he funny, is a mean old me. man. <laughs> no, no, he's like a man with a heart. He's like the heart of gold, old man who like acts mean but like is also caring, and that's not coming through in the audiobook. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. Movies? Anyone watch a movie? I did. I watched, oh my God, I watched on the plane. It's called She Came to Me. It's with Peter Dinklage, Anne Hathaway, and Marissa Tomei. And oh, it was said to be a romantic comedy. No, Meant this, to be? this was not a romantic comedy. It was like, it was like a, a it was not a thriller. It was just, it was, it was a lot, okay? I, 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 once I finished the movie, I literally turned to Taya. I was like, I just watched the craziest movie I think I've ever watched <laughs> before in my life. <laughs> what is it? Oh, what what is that it? voice. I Bring know. That back. Bring it? that more. I, um, need to, I need a little synopsis. Okay, so Peter Dinklage is a music composer, and he makes he, he creates operas. But right now, he's in, like, a, a rut. He has a blockage in his brain, and he can't really write anything new. Um, and, he's ma- and he married his therapist, who is Anne Hathaway. And Anne Hathaway what? is her he character. He married his <laughs> therapist. How to marry your therapist? Definitely a conflict of interest. And, ha- and Anne Hathaway's character character also has a lot of weird funky things about her she fucking loves to clean and she <laughs> hates germs like doing some of the same out? shit that christine does where she like won't touch anything <laughs> that's been outside and <laughs> <laughs> when did it come out how did i know about last this? year it came Whoa. out last year and um uh and like Anyways, and so they got married. She has a kid from another marriage, and uh, he's in high school. And so, uh, one morning, this is one morning. Like Peter wakes up, and he's like, "Can we have the sex tonight?" And she's like, "Honey, 
it's Thursday. We don't have sex tonight. And then he's like, I just really need to like get, I don't know, I'm having some sort of block. I and would, she goes, okay, why don't you go on a walk? And then she pushes him out for a walk and she takes the dog. And um, he like walks around New York City trying to get like new ideas and open his mind. And he goes into a bar and this is where he meets Marissa Tomei, who is a tugboat operator. Weird what? fucking job. <laughs> Anyways, he she ends up like uh, I'm not. Gonna, this is as far as I'm gonna go because there's a lot of other like twisty things in it because like there's something that happens with obviously Anne Hathaway's affair. son, and then there's another character who like Anne Hathaway's son um, is like a girlfriend boyfriend with another character. Anyways, I'm not going to talk about that portion of the film because it's all like intertwined. And so Marissa Tomei and Peter Dinklage are like talking at the bar and she gets him to go onto her tugboat and they have a <laughs> full blown so affair. It's sexual. No, oh, see, God. it's it very sexual. And then he's like, he gets really scared of her. And then ultimately the next year, it like moves to the next year. He has now created an opera about a tugboat operator who lures men into her boat and kills them. And oh, I would, means- I would watch that opera. Oh my God. <laughs> that was, I would watch that, that means- opera. <laughs> that he's obsessed with her. And then that's how the story keeps going. <laughs> Wow. Now these have, this movie has huge stars in it. Wow. <laughs> huge. I, yeah. So that was a movie I watched and I was like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> <So> that's, <laughs> it's that's fucking crazy, went. man. <laughs> uh, Chloe, did you like Red, White, and Royal Blue? <laughs> Loved. No, what's not to like about it? I was kind of disappointed just because I read the book first. Um, mm, yeah. And I kind of wish that it was a TV show because the pacing mm-hmm. could have been better and they yes. could have included more. That yes. being said, it was a really strong movie adaptation and mm-hmm. it pulled on all my heartstrings. And I'm sorry, I don't know who the actor was, but the actor who played Alex is just so hot. He is. He's perfect. He's literally perfect. Every Like just watching him, it was like it kind of hurt. You I should watch like, oh, Minx on HBO what? Max. Minx? Winx? Inks? Minx. M-I-N-X. Yes. Taylor Zachar Perez. I think Tiffany just said. Yeah, Isn't he's it Taylor like, Zachary Perez? Taylor Zachary Perez. I don't know. Or he's so Zachar? fucking hot. I like want mm-hmm. him to really spit is. in my mouth. I just. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I so love. he's naked a lot in Minx. He plays one of like the male models. He is. So it, sounds like a late, it sounds like a late night. Oh, I think watch. I need to watch it. I didn't know he was <laughs> naked in it. It's like a car. late night. Hand you know, it's about like a female Playboy magazine, and she wants to make. So yeah, you don't know about it. Okay, so the pitch is really great. So she really wants to make a feminist magazine, and she meets this guy at the magazine con who does porn, and he was like, "We could make that if you make it with like female, like with male porn stuff in it." And she's like, "I don't want to make a porn magazine, but like, should you hide? Like, you put." The feminine Isn't articles feminist? amongst the oh. amongst the pictures, and it like blew up, and it was became this like feminist icon magazine. Yeah, okay, it's really I'm, cool. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna see and like mostly to watch him naked. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, the uh, Nicholas Galdstein, who a lot of my Gen Z friends are obsessed with, um, which I think is so funny. But he's coming out in the new Anne Hathaway Wattpad movie oh i want to watch that yeah. Yeah. oh I, I i i can bring plus ones i'll get you guys into the <gasps> screening <gasps> this week. when next week it's after Chloe's birthday well after the disney day the 17th oh my god love Ooh, okay well exciting. now i have to find a fucking girl okay um <laughs> anyways tv Since oh it wasn't wattpad lol the book is really good oh it's just a book okay <laughs> just a book no fanfic <laughs> boo okay i'm gonna move us into our main discussion yes oh wait fuck wait let's just touch on tv really quickly (laughs) okay so tv this week um me and natasha both watched a three body program the the, the three body problem on netflix and it was so good this was made by the dudes who did game of thrones Mm -hmm. and it's based off another book series and i was just completely enraptured by it um it gives like westworld vibes Mm -hmm. it's on netflix so it's so easy to binge it and 
I've just been it's thinking creepy. about it nonstop. I didn't watch it, but I watched Trixie Mattel and Katya's um, <laughs> watch of it, and I yeah. think I got enough, and it really was everything to me. So who's who are those? Trixie people? Mattel and Katya, Trixie the Mattel? drag queens, literally oh, my I everything's. I don't know. I'm them. okay. Well, I am a drag queen girly. And they watch Netflix shows and do really funny commentary. I'll send it to you. You'll really It's really it. good. I've watched it's a lot of them. It's very good. It's very good. <laughs> okay, cool. Natasha, did you <laughs> Super have inappropriate, thoughts? but yeah. Um, Three Body Problem. Uh, yeah, I told Christine to watch this because Alex and I were like kind of obsessed yep. with it. Uh, I just I need the new season. I need it now. I like, need it, it now. I didn't feel very satisfied with the end. I'm de- mm. I'm like debating reading the next book, but like also I don't want to spoil the season if they My get picked up for a second season. Read this book and I'm kind of triggered by that, but oh sorry, maybe <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> maybe it's I'll really watch good. if I like the TV show, then I'll read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. So I don't know if I want to read the book, but I definitely want to watch the TV show. Yeah. Oh, it's promised for two seasons already. Yes. Okay, that's exciting, Tiffany. Okay, good. All right, we're gonna move on into our main discussion because we're at like the hour mark almost. We've been talking, just chit chatting about <laughs> our All other segments. Yes, catching up. All right. So, the generations. I'm very excited to talk about like the generations we don't ha- we didn't know the names of because like researching those was really fun they actually started naming the generations in the 20th century so mm. like it is a fairly new event i was like were there names of generations in the 1600s what did, did it start with silent did it start with the no silent it's generation? so it started with the lost generation okay. and the lost generation it's really sad they're the millennials of the like going into the 20th century so they were oh. born in 1883 to 1900 and so that would be like 1883 to like 2000 now and um they like a lot of them died in world war one and i feel like that's why they're called the lost generation because they were coming of age in the early 1900s and the 1910s and that's so sad they could have been on the titanic (laughs) they also probably experienced a pandemic as well Mm -hmm. the uh spanish influenza the one that killed edward cullen oh yeah Mm -hmm. Um, was edward a part of the lost generation yeah Yeah. he was 1900 he was wow Wow. Maybe that's uh, why millennials like him so much. <laughs> the parallels. <laughs> um, that's an essay. So mm-hmm. the next generation was the greatest generation, which is very like a very pompous name. <laughs> mm-hmm. The greatest generation. The greatest generation. The GI generation born 1901 to 1927. And oh, they wow. lived through the Great Depression. And is a lot that of them Biden. Pom- um, no. Maybe when was he born? I don't know, he wasn't man. Born before Y'all... 1927. No, oh, no, no, he was no, no. old. <laughs> yeah, he's sorry, that was like really blonde. Thirties, forties. Yeah, yeah. Still um, really old. Yeah, okay. still really old. But the the GI generation, a lot of them um, fought in World War II. They popularized jazz and swing music. Mm. Um, let's see. Due to the current events. Of this generation, the challenge of raising a family put a premium on traits like hard work and grit. Mm. Um, so, yeah, during the Great Depression, like, that was a rough time <laughs> to raise a family. Um, <laughs> yeah. Then we had the silent generation. Now Biden. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that was anyone born between 1928 and 1925. So my Nana falls into the silent generation. 1945, right? 1945, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the silent generation, I got this from a website about the different generations. The silent generation famously got their name for being so conformist that they were Mm. silent through the McCarthy era when the fear of communism swept the country. During this era, kids were expected to earn their way through life using a strong work ethic, which really makes sense with like how the boomers were raised. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I was about to say these are like yeah the boomer parents. Oh wait, yeah. we we have a whole like missing. We have like ten years missing here. We do. They just didn't have a name. I guess they were like a big crossover. Yeah, because boomers start nineteen fifty four. So that's really interesting, actually. The cuspers. The cuspers. With a boomer with the, the I guess they're kind years, of zoomers though. too. There's like nine years of cuspers. Yeah. Wait. Well, this is the thing. So it was really interesting. Like 
the amount of years that a generation takes up is getting like progressively trending towards shorter because technology is making the experience Mm. growing up so vastly different so much faster as it moves faster and faster so like the lost generation was 17 years the gi generation was 26 years um and i think that lost generation is shorter because of the war um and then the gi generation 26 years 17 years for the silent generation boomers are like 11 years but then we have Gen X, 15, Millennials, 16, Gen Z, 15, Gen Alpha, 14. So they go down to the teens instead of like well, being like 20 something. The baby boomers were 1946 to 1964. So they, they cover a long time. They cover a long time, but like a lot of things, a lot of, yeah, I guess, I guess this website put it sooner, but. That makes more sense. So that was a longer generation. Yeah, no, I um, seem to remember boomers like being like the like yeah, because they're also like the biggest. Because they were after they the have war. Been it the was biggest, like yeah, when everyone started having Baby kids boomers. after World War Two. Yeah. yeah. Are all um, our parents boomers? My yes, parents right? are boomers. Yeah, yeah both mine are my, yeah. too. Um. Yeah. So my parents are uh, old for for me. <laughs> they boomers parents notably redefined parenting by being the first generation to look at their kids perspective of growing up and they started the concept mm. of having family meetings <gasps> apparently <laughs> weird that's not my experience <laughs> not my i got experience no say either <laughs> also everyone that was around me had younger parents and like i had such a different experience like compared to them mm. yeah um then the Gen X is 1965 to 1980. So my mom's kind of a cusper um, there. She's 63. Three. Yeah. Were, my mother yeah, was, she was like too. full. She's like, I'm baby boomer. Like she just owned that. <laughs> Embraced shit. it. My, my mom. Yeah. My mom's 70. Like she's pretty old. When was she born? My mom was born in um, 54. Oh wow! Wow, your yeah. mom looks great. I know. Oh, yeah, plastic surgeon husband. <laughs> get, get you one of those. <laughs> um, so Gen X, I feel like, is the generation that like wasn't very talked about while we were growing. Did you up. make? I was gonna say, did you guys make fun of them the way that like no, we make no, fun we of never. You? No fucking Chloe, idea. We didn't even know they had a name. Like no. we didn't know. Nobody talked. They about were like the hippies. Right? No, those were the boomers. Oh. Like Gen X were like punk rock. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Like their heyday yeah. was the nineties. And oh. the eighties. The late eighties, yeah. yeah. Um, so so often dismissed as the slacker generation, Gen X lived through the AIDS epidemic, MTV culture, and shifting landscape that would rise to LGBTQ rights. Um, Gen X parents were the first to use the term the helicopter parenting style, apparently. <laughs> oh. Unlike boomer parents who famously let their kids stay outside till the streetlights came on, <laughs> Gen X's have a tendency to be far more involved with their s- children's social and educational interesting. development. Interesting. Which is interesting. To I hear, had the yeah. most helicopter parents in, of my freaking life. I'm not oh. sure what they're talking about. Well, my parents, like, we used to, it wasn't like my dad who used to say, like, we just got home and they were like, go outside and then you come home for dinner. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, but like I used to like go outside and play um with my friends and then just come back without anyone following me around. Yeah. I, I remember like this generation also like being referred to as the lat the latkey kids, the the latkey kids. Because their parents well, there was a lot in the nineties too. Yeah. Yeah, because their parents were working and so they just like came home, walked, you know, walked on home and then no- there was no one there to like Mm. really parent them because every both parents yeah. were working at the time and i feel yeah. like that's like they're the first generation that really experienced that well and we started to have those like little keypads for the garage so yeah. we could get in that way oh my yeah. god true yeah um so like i think a lot of millennials had that too mm-hmm. um for sure but okay so then we have millennials 1980 to 1996 um and this website was like millennials live through 9-11 they remember when amazon only sold books <laughs> <laughs> and also we're the first generation to know a childhood with and without the internet which 
plays a significant role in their personal lives. While boomers may accuse millennials of being self-centered and impatient due to their excessive use of technology, the generation has proven to actually be incredibly community-oriented and environmentally conscious, mm. which are traits that are being picked up by their children. Oh. Um, yeah. I, I will say that last point, um, the point about like remembering a time with internet and without internet, Mm-hmm. is interesting because like I remember a time without smartphones mm-hmm. which is I think the like maybe the cusper like the zillennial yeah. kind of frame or it's just like that's what Gen Z is is like we remember but little Gen Z doesn't you remember dumb phones yeah I do remember dumb phones I remember stupid phones I, I had a mm-hmm. razor yeah oh yeah, yeah. You had a razor? <laughs> I had a razor wow. yeah I had a pink I had razor I had one in high school, and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I had one in elementary school. <laughs> Wait, when did you get your first phone, Chloe? Yeah, so I got you? my first phone when I was in fifth grade, and it called my mom, wow. my dad, and my tata Lily. And that's it. And it was nice. a razor, and it like had parental controls. And mm-hmm. then I got my first iPhone, and it was the first iPhone that ever like existed. Um, mm-hmm. 2004? During when my bat mitzvah. That? Okay. Oh. No. When did that happen? What year was the iPhone? I think yeah. 2007 was the first iPhone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember Verizon didn't carry it, so I couldn't fucking. Get I bought my first AT&T. iPhone with my bot mitzvah money. That was like my one purchase. And I was so oh, excited nice. that I got to like I message my friends and like go on YouTube and read did They all have one? Did your friends have an iPhone? Yeah, most of them. I was kind of like the last wow. to get one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Natasha, when did you get your first phone? Sixth grade. I had like a little flip phone. Wow. And um, we, we just had this conversation in New Zealand with everyone. And uh, I didn't get my first smartphone probably until after high school. I got it in college. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be that weird parent that like doesn't get let my kid have a smartphone until... It's the high school, I, I was that person that was like, why do you need a smartphone? Just check your computer. They get your email. <laughs> like, They're going to have a computer, obviously, for like school. But yeah. the, the phone thing, I'm like, ew, like Instagram ruined my life when I was like 12. So like, I don't oh. think it. You oh, know? no. Yeah. No. And I think yeah. that's, we'll talk about it. But like, yeah, having social media so young, like ruins your fucking psyche, man. Yeah. Mm. I got my first phone when I was 13 for Christmas mm-hmm. and it was like a little flip phone with a green and black screen it wasn't even like black and white it was like that green like oh digital my <laughs> oh my god archaic yeah. and it didn't have any like window on the front it was just silver and it just like flipped and it was like a little Motorola <laughs> um wow lg or whatever I can't even remember sometimes um, I forget that you're older than both of us <laughs> Well, that was in 2003. <laughs> you say 2003? It was in 2003. Um, and then I got my razor in like 2005. And then I switched to like the keyboard phones, which I never went back. Yes. I, I love so satisfying. Phones. I love those. I literally yeah. did. Either of you ever break your keyboard phone because you were flipping it so much or like no. sliding it so much? Because I did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I I was so sad when they stopped making those and I had to start using a screen to touch. Yeah. They make them again now because everything's cool again. We just do circles. My friend has this like slider. It's basically a tablet, but it slides and it has like an entire keyboard. Oh, nice. I think I've seen those. Yeah. Or the phones nice. that fold that are literally flip phones. But I don't, my uncle has that one. I don't know how to feel about those. They kind of scare me. I think they I'd scare break me too. That. And they have like yeah. a they have a demarcation because you you're folding yeah, it, so you're you can kind of see it. Yeah, but uh, Sabrina Carpenter has it because she is a um, she uses person. a fucking iPhone, but she has it. But she, she has that phone. She's a spokesperson for. That I, do phone. I, do I do love her ads. I do. I do love. I'll eat up anything she does. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got my smartphone in 2010, and then it kind of was so cool to be able to check my email and see when people subscribe to my YouTube. I was like, getting that's emails. cute. That's like a different, yeah. That's like a unique experience to y'all too. Like, yeah. people were actually you like actually had things to check. I don't think <laughs> I did. 
<laughs> it was so fun also to see when like people tweeted you like, oh yeah the got, tweets. like the notifications yeah oh my gosh i remember so i didn't again i didn't have a smartphone all through high school but i remember i was very active on twitter because of my twilight fangirlness and I, that's where like my little, yeah that's where my little community was and i remember like going to the teen choice awards as like a seat filler and like tweeting using my phone but you could like text to tweet and then i would get like replies oh, back i do my remember God. text to tweet yeah. i do I remember text that. to tweet and i'd be like That's i'm so sitting funny. i'm sitting behind Callan lutz right now and then i would get like people <laughs> responding back oh my god wait you guys i have kind of a like quick side note you know how yes. i said that Callan lutz um would be my ideal stature and he's like six five mm-hmm. yes okay i'm talking to someone who's six seven Ooh, <gasps> that is so tall, Chloe. Yeah, I'm Taylor know. Swift. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like you're gonna I'm date not that much Kelsey. shorter than Taylor Swift. Like, no, like, you're not. Um, but I six five was so tall that I can't even imagine six seven. <laughs> so hard. I'm excited. Anyways, <laughs> look up. Move on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Gen Z, Natasha, want to read this little Gen Z blurb? Yeah, so Gen Z kids are the first to be born into a world where they know nothing else besides being constantly connected to one another. I'll bet through phones, screens, and tablets. However, like millennials before them, Gen Zers are often environmentally conscious, inclusive, and accepting of others, and extremely politically aware, despite many of them not being of voting age. See that? That's crazy to me because I'm 24. I'm almost 25. Like I've been voting age for a fucking while. Like that is crazy when I think about people that are Gen Z that were born in 2012. I'm like, oh my God, like that feels so different to me. Mm -hmm. But all this tells me of this, like this description you just read, Natasha, is that millennials walked so Gen Z could run. Like there Mm -hmm. is no denying it. And it pisses me off. Like Gen Z could not be Gen Z without the amount of fucking work millennials put in. And Mm -hmm. also millennials being kind of the experiment for the internet. Like, and you guys having and learning how to be connected all the time and what that means and like how that would change the world. So, yeah. Millennials like created the landscape for it to be our jobs. Like so many of us work on the internet. Yes, we're all, look at us. We all create our own schedule. Like Yeah, Yeah, and like, when we were doing that all the adults were like what the fuck are you doing oh (laughs) people are still like what the fuck are you doing my tax guy was like what the fuck are you doing i don't understand your job at all oh yeah they are (laughs) much more widely known that like it's a thing and when i was like i want to do youtube they were like how what are you talking about that's true and like like christine's making videos in her room being like living in la la land (laughs) like and I mean that like not the LA like la, 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 like both ooh. both yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the we're the internet starter people, the internet guinea pigs. Yeah. Um, well, and it's so it's funny because like Gen Z group also watching us, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I had this like theory that I was thinking about because, like, that little TikTok I made was talking about how like. When I was turning 30, I was, like, relieved because it was, like, they can't say we're the youth that's fucking up the world anymore. Because that's what they they did from the time we were, like, 18 on. Millennials and, like, selfies. Millennials and, like, uh, narcissism <laughs> and the internet. It was just, like, constant. And um millennials somehow got blamed for everything and then we were lazy and everything they, i think i feel like they say that about every single generation so i was like oh now it's gonna be gen z and we get to like a little break from people shitting us all really, the time though. and then um it instantly was like gen z who were like oh it's time for us to make fun of the millennials <laughs> Okay, but I think, like, making what? fun of people that are older than you is pretty common. It like, is, but it was never like this. It was never, like, generational. Well, it was never like this because the internet didn't exist. Yeah, because yeah. people weren't as aware. But, like, we never were, like, Gen X was, like, they're so close to our age. Like, it was, like, it's, like, they weren't old enough. It was always boomers, I feel like, that we were, like, kind of poking fun of. But we never even called them that until... I don't okay here's the thing (laughs) here's the thing I don't make fun of you guys but there are moments 
where I'm like, oh, that's millennial cringe. (laughs) But it doesn't like make me upset. (laughs) Also, it usually only happens with men. Like I think. What is a men? Can you give me an example of a male millennial cringe? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Give like, it. Like, <laughs> the emoji use is really bad. Oh, my God. What do you mean? We need more detail. Like, okay, the laughing face emoji for everything and, like, response to everything, like, really drives me cuckoo. <laughs> um, um, the, the, the music that men listen to. <laughs> <laughs> the music that millennial men listen to is like really cringy. What? It's like, like, it's like two? white boy rap. No, no, no. I'm talking about like their white boy rap. Um, Eminem? No, Eminem's good. But then they when they sing to it, though, you're like, oh, my God, kill me. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess I don't know many fun. boys who are into white boy rap. I think millen- <laughs> millennial boy style is usually really bad. You know, it's what? interesting because I'm thinking of... Um, I'm thinking of the men I've dated because I only date millennials pretty much. (laughs) And (laughs) (laughs) it's true. And um, as I feel like that fluctuates from person to person, like, like the style, you know, like, yeah, Alex Alex has good style based on what I've seen. But like most most men don't have good style. No. They like Gen Z has jeans. a very specific style and millennial has a very specific style. There is what of are course they? a range. Okay. But I'm thinking of like millennial guys are not wearing like super baggy, um, not the super baggy, like cargo pants or the jeans. No, that's um, like Gen they're Z. usually wearing flannels. They're like, you, right. I yes. love flannels. Like, oh, yeah. Well, Christine. okay. But you're dating millennials and you're a millennial. <laughs> I will never forget going on that one date and that man was wearing a flannel and like a like a. Wait, are you talking about like plaids? Like what? Do you every mean? Like first plaids. date I've yeah. ever been on with a fucking man, usually a millennial, it's always a flannel. It's always a flannel. Oh. It's always a flannel. Oh, and I'm I like dating people who are wearing fucking t-shirts on every fucking date. See that gives Gen Z to me. Oh, that's are they baggy the t-shirts or are they like no, well they're fitted? like, like no, they're not regular baggy. t-shirts yeah, yeah so just... regular t-shirts is millennial baggy t-shirts with a mustache and baggy the mustache trend i just Gen really Z. don't like it because it gives i don't I like know why mustache. it gives pedophile to me <laughs> I, I love a mustache i want to ride a mustache when i see one usually oh my gosh <laughs> Yeah, Nicole said, my millennial husband has a million flannels, but I've bought him like half of them. Of course you have, Nicole. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with flannels. They're cute. They're just, they just scream millennial. They do scream millennial. Why do they scream millennial? Because I, to me, they scream like like guy who works in the forest. No, it's like a guy who works in the forest. Is it Fern? You're talking about Fern? No, it's because like 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 he they they don't work in the forest that's the issue they think like putting, <laughs> they think like putting a flannel on over their t-shirt makes it like more fancy with yeah, their like, like oh, that's jeans. fashion baby the yeah. millennial men put on a flannel and they're like damn i look so fucking good right now they're gonna be so impressed with my fashion and it's like you just put on a flannel babe <laughs> also give 90s to you tiffany yeah <coughs> so what is the Gen Z like go to? Just baggy shirt, you mean? Baggy shirt, baggy pants, mustache. Yeah. And Nikes. I don't know. They all look the same. They all look the same. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. There's like a millennial style and there's a Gen Z style and it's okay. obvious. But yeah, there's like a range. I don't know. I only date nerds. So like I'm not the I know. right person to ask. I'm dating like men that have dweeby style. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, what were you going to say? I don't remember, but like, I mean, I think Nicole. there's, what what did Nicole Z. say? Gen Z wears sweats as fashion. Yeah. Yeah. We fucking totally. love sweats. You know, the, the amount of times I will never forget this. I went to Disneyland like right before, Dis- right before Christmas and I put an outfit together where I wore like a bodysuit and, um, and sweatpants and then I like loved a that big, fit. yeah. Oh, I got so yeah, many. The girlies love the fit. 
they, yeah. like I love the fact that like you can dress up sweatpants and then it's fashion. That's my yes. favorite fucking thing that has okay, come out of Gen can Z. Can I say something can, kind of I want to say something too oh, about millennial sweatsuit fashion. Go ahead. Well, okay. I think Natasha dresses more Gen Z and Christine dresses more millennial. Oh, well, yeah. And, and you can see the di- literally you can see your age difference in your style. Like, Christine, oh. when you're rocking combat boots, you look sexy as fuck, but that just screams millennial to me. Oh, you're just talking about that. I feel like I do a lot of Gen Z stuff, though. Like, I've got a lot of baggy shit now. Mm. Not when you dress up. dress up. Not when I'm you not dress up. I'm not talking about dress up. I'm talking about, like, my you... day-to-day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Baggy. I mean, but sweats are just comfortable, and everyone should wear well, sweats. Well, I know, but, like, the sweatshirts, the, like, the oversized sweatshirts and, like, stuff, I feel like, are very Gen Z, too. Right, but when you show up to like a recording day or like when we're all hanging out, I'm like, oh, like that gives millennial. You know oh, what I mean? Well, I am millennial. <laughs> I know. I just, you can see like, you can even see with the three of us because we are all different ages and I'd argue like Natasha is a true cusp. You're a true millennial. And I'm like pretty much a true Gen Z. You mm-hmm. can see the style influences even there. Yeah. 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 It's I, wild the like the punk rock mm-hmm. of like the early 2000s had a really yeah, big you dress pretty edgy yeah still um, to this day like you have edgy influences i love it Avril yeah. levine changed my life <laughs> here's the thing though it's your the way you dress as a millennial though is still hot and it's still oh, like thanks. i'd argue i'd argue still like pretty trendy you're not wearing like a quote t-shirt or like I don't know what's another cringe thing that you guys used to no, do no with yeah. a scarf <laughs> oh the infinity stage. scarf baby those that 2012 stage of fashion pissed me off the so owl much. necklaces I hate cardigans the mustaches I hate scarves peplum peplum's coming oh, back I hate peplum just all of that the chunky um, necklaces so the like it, it, uh, the statement necklaces were Christian fun girl autumn core. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Tiffany. Okay. But going back to sweats, how you're talking about making sweats fashion. So making sweats fashion in millennial high school time was rolling them down mm-hmm. to like, right. Like you roll the sweatpants your so like right over your vagina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like super low. And then you wear like a really tight cami. <laughs> yeah. We did that too. We and did that that's too. It. That's the outfit. <laughs> We took inspo from you guys, and we were like, oh, my God, they look like whores, but they're wearing sweatpants. Love. So we would do that, and we would wear short Uggs and the messy bun. Mm. Yes. Love the, the messy Uggs bun. Uggs and the messy bun. You know bun what we used to do? Outfit. You know what we used to do since I grew up in California is we used to like get stickers and we would go tanning and we would put a sticker basically on our hip oh bone. Oh my god! Like oh, I the know people who used or like to do a that. dolphin or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And then we would roll our sweatpants back and we would like go to school on Monday feeling hot as <laughs> fuck because we tanned all weekend and we have like a dolphin on our hip Fucking bone. Tanning. And then you know the history teacher that you like kind of see as a father figure looks at you and is like. Ew, <laughs> yeah the um, playboy bunny tanning sticker katie yeah red and then of free. course juicy mm-hmm. like sweatsuits on your ass us. oh yeah yeah growing up um mm-hmm. and we were like looking at like paris hilton wearing those we used to wear sweatsuits. short shorts like spandex short shorts like what you would wear for volleyball with like tall ugg boots Do you oh guys ever get that yes Oh yeah, yes. psycho! Are you kidding? Like are your oh, feet those cold? Sophie shorts? I the lived Sophie, those shorts. Sophie shorts <laughs> in high school because like that's what you wear to cheerleading practice. Yeah. So well, I had, we like, all Sophie had camel toes. Like what was that? And you had to roll the Sophie shorts like three times because you can't have like the white. You have to go one you more. To, yeah, <laughs> and every like it's underwear. <laughs> um. Yeah. If you're a flyer, you had to wear like the tight biker like little shorts underneath so you weren't like flashing anybody were you a flyer oh, yeah i was a flyer i loved oh, to fly i was a base <laughs> I... respectable base really i was never strong. little enough to be a flyer um but yeah i was a flyer and i didn't know about that rule until like sophomore year i was like why didn't you tell me <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about gen alpha 
Yep. Let's oh my move God. to Gen Alpha. Go they ahead. Are, talk. They are going to what make it say? so much fun of Gen Z. Like, yeah. don't worry. We have <laughs> it coming. Like, Gen <laughs> Alpha is about they is going already to rip are saying into us. Yeah. Things that you guys do are out. And they I'm already like, are. Yep. Um, but you so know what Gen is... Alpha is? It's like the little girls at Sephora that are exactly. looking at you with a dirty ass look while you're picking up your fucking Benetint and they're mm-hmm. like over in rare beauty and they're looking at you like you've got something on your fi- face mm-hmm. and it's like shit. The Sephora barbarians. <laughs> um, okay. So Gen Alpha is, well, 2010, 2012 to 2024. So apparently this is their last year of being born. Uh, so <laughs> oh my God. years. <laughs> Uh, So anyone who's cooking in the oven right now, you're going to be a Gen Alpha. Um, Oh, shoot. Ah, I just lost Or they could be the next one, right? What's nine months from now? Is it going to be Gen Beta? Like, (laughs) that'd be so funny. That'd be so funny. I want them to have like like an actual name, not just like Gen Alpha. I know, but the Gen Z and Gen Alpha are just going by the alphabet. Yeah. I love Zoomer. I I love love Zoomer. Zoomer. Yes. So, um, Gen Alpha begins with sad beige baby. Um, <laughs> oh no. Can you um, explain this? For that's those who all don't millennial know what parents. This means. Millennial parents. This is millennial parents. Not all millennials. It's a, it's a wide range. Some yeah. are still Gen X. Some are even Gen Z who have yeah. like young ass children. Mm-hmm. Um, child be, bride, child that, parents. Yeah, or that would be my cousin too. She's your yeah. age. She's got a three year old. Holy shit. Yeah. I can't so. take care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, this aggressively oatmeal aesthetic has dominated infant care since around Gen Alpha's midpoint in 2017, desaturating high chairs, play gyms, and diaper pails from electric green to subtle I- sage. I do feel like though this is um also about like de gender stereotyping. Yeah. Um, and we really were trying to do that. The millennials are really trying to be like we shouldn't like force a color on a gender. <laughs> oh um, my god. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I mean, hey, you could choose your color now, but like they were trying to do like like g- boys d- don't have to not like pink and like yeah, like it doesn't have I, to but, be like boys can and girls can be like blue like can i say something kind of controversial and maybe republican oh i just God. like don't think that <laughs> i just like don't think this is going to make a difference like if you have a baby girl who's born a female right and you put her in pink and raise her in pink no matter what ha- no matter what happens yeah. if if this person was born to be gender by non-binary no. they're going to do that no and- i totally feel that i think it was more about like starting thinking that way cuz no one was even mm-hmm. thinking that way they were like yeah. thinking but can very you th- you black can and white about it you can think that way without colors right no i don't like, like- I, it was about changing the conversation. It was okay. too early to even have that sort of thought. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. like even yeah. now, like, like we're getting more into like everyone can yeah. love every single color. Yeah. yeah. But but I'm in more so support of using and like a we yellow, up. a yellow and a green. Like well, a that's pale also yellow and a pale green. Pale yellow. Like, like you're, people yeah. started Not buying do. pale yellow, pale green, like beige. Here's that's, the thing. That started. When I have a girl, because I'm having a girl, obviously, I'm not going to have a boy. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I'm going to put this girl in a lot of fucking pink. And if she becomes like six, seven, I mean, eight. Now it's completely different. We think so openly about it. No yeah. one thought openly about it. That's when we valid. Were kids. Yeah. Yeah. If she hates yeah. pink, fine. Like, fine. Yeah. We won't yeah. have to do pink. But, like, w- when I am in charge still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nicole says, to me, it seems like a lot of it is just parents trying to fit their kids' stuff into their aesthetic, which is what I initially yeah. thought it was, too. I think too. so. It, it feels I think it started that way. before that aesthetic, though. It did start before that aesthetic. I agree. But, like, now, growing. though, with the beige and the neutrals and the, like, no colors, like, I it just hate feels that like aesthetic. People, yeah, I do, too. But I feel like it's people trying to make their nursery aesthetic to, to like, I don't know. The new wave has been that aesthetic at weddings, and I'm already tired of it. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. I, the the whole the, there was an article that came out and um, that the world is slowly losing color because people just stopped 
using color. Like if you look could at the cars us. that we drive could or the houses us. that we own. Um, <laughs> no, Katie, it's all colors. Kim Kardashian's fault. <laughs> it is. It, it is low key. Is. Fucking we are not those people. We are not those people. We are yeah. constantly colorful. Mm-hmm. So if you like that, you found the right people. <laughs> Her house is my nightmare. Yeah, I just learned about millennial gray. Like I didn't even know that was a thing because I don't, I don't subscribe. I'm wearing millennial <laughs> pink today, aren't I? <laughs> is millennial pink a thing? Yes, yes it is. I, I think just like every color is, is millennial in front of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a Disneyland <gasps> color. Okay, I found this super interesting um, because it is me. Uh, I am like scientifically peak millennial millennials that were born in 1990 and 1991 are the highest percentage of millennials and this is a whole article in the new york times like i know (laughs) i am i i but it's like a lot of times like youths will compare us like people who are like in their 40s and those are like really elder millennials like and so like the peak millennials are like 33 (laughs) which is wild so they've been i i there was a whole thing about how like they taylor was swift that, is peak millennial yeah Let taylor swift forget. and i are peak millennial we are yeah. on the same that's why we're on the same way like um but when we were going to college it was the first year that community colleges had to turn away applicants because there was so much competition because there were so many people trying to get into college that year are less people wild. going to college now Yes, yes, there's been a that are has you guys gonna be the most the like educated generation or is... peak millennials, I think yeah. are because our parents were like, if you don't go to college, yeah. you will never get a job and you will die. It was yeah. like that mentality. my parents yeah. were the same. like they were like, there's no choice for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just thought like that's what we do. That's what you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Katie said, Katie, oh, no, I'm thirty six. I would argue that's still not elder. I think no, it's not. Like... Elder is Elder is forty two right now. I think. Oh my god, yeah. that's so old. Um, that's the elder. You're millennial. dating people that age. What are you talking <laughs> about? I've never dated anyone over forty. I, try, I tried. I tried once. Uh, we can talk about that later. <laughs> um, but okay, let's talk emojis lost in translation. Okay, mm-hmm. we need to get this conversation here. So I had us all put down our top 10 used emojis so we can comment on each other's emojis before we go into like what we think other emojis mean who wants to start on like their emoji list what is your top 10 most used emojis Natasha? i can go i feel like i'm missing some now that i'm looking at chloe's every time you every time you uh say an emoji i'm going to tell you if it's a gen z or a millennial emoji in my opinion okay okay um i realized the eyes that chloe has i definitely fucking use those all the time i hate those eyes they feel so mean every time i see them like fuck i send those to you literally every time we text (laughs) what do you mean you send it like once and i was like it wasn't as mean as sometimes i see it in comments being mean (laughs) (laughs) okay so i have the heart hands emoji because that's my new favorite way gen z gen z emoji of sending Um, excuse me that's a millennial thing that's taylor swift it's a millennial thing a gen z emoji okay (laughs) and then i have take the emoji (laughs) because i just did thanks everyone's sending their emojis in the chat i Um, love it oh my god there's millennial i i have the like sad but like cute face where they have like the big eyes and like the tears and i use that when like something like really warms my heart Mm -hmm. i love that emoji i use that too yeah that's a gen z one why is that gen z because it it's new we popular popularized using that emoji and it's Mm -hmm. newer um and then i have the praying hands emoji and this is when yeah this is when (laughs) i'm asking something and i'm like please please do that for me um then I have the crazy face that like Gen the, Z thumb, emoji. The, the tongue out to the side. That's when I'm feeling crazy. <laughs> I'll do an equals and a P for that. Yeah. It's so um, special. <laughs> 
And then, so I stopped using like the crying faces, but now I use the cat crying face because I feel so like it's cute. This to me is almost so millennial that it's Gen Z. Like it feels like you are making fun of the fact that you're a millennial. Mm-hmm. Wait, why are you using the cat crying emoji? <laughs> Because I felt like I've the other crying emoji, it's new. Because I felt like the other emoji was way too millennial, and so now I'm like what? What reverting back. Oh my god, it's Can like it's like you're like, making it back around the circle, and yeah. it's like it's so millennial that it's Gen Z. Wait, which one are you saying is millennial? Like crying, crying, like with the tears coming out of their eyes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never used that one. Um, okay, and then we have the heart kissy face. I use that one all the fucking time. That one is millennial, but I also use it all the time. Yeah. I think there's like no better option. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I have the uh, the melting face. I fucking love the melting face. It's very it Gen like Z and it is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I have just like my regular hearts. I've got the pink heart with the sparkles and the double pink heart. And, um, and then the last <laughs> one, I feel like those are not like either, right? No, they're not. The sparkle I love heart the is hands really up. interesting. So Natasha mm. was saying like the hands up, like kind yeah. of applause, clapping, yeah. applause, Emoji. which I feel like is very millennial. This feels very I like Slack reaction, like corporate, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> corporate <laughs> emoji. I, I wouldn't yes. know. <laughs> I know neither of you would time. know, but. Yes, I did. I, I guess you, you worked. Yeah, corporate. you worked corporate. Yeah, that one feels corporate. Yep. Okay, Christine, you go. Oh, okay. I use so the little nerd emoji, like the the this one is the glasses either. and the like buck it's teeth. Indie. It's like an indie I emoji. I use this to use. all the time when I say something really nerdy. <laughs> it's very you. It's cute. Um, I use the fire emoji all the time. I love fire. I, I think the fire is becoming millennial. Like it's mm-hmm. like phasing out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it goes with my book right now, so I use it all the time because it feels like Survivor. I use the two hearts. I use the pink heart. I use the black heart. I use the heart hands. (laughs) But you use the heart hands in yellow, which I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Why? Because it's the smiley face color. (laughs) You don't use it in your own skin tone? I use it in the smiley face color. This is the default color. I never touch anything. No, I know. I just, I'm, I'm, I think that says something. I'm not sure what it says, but it says something about you. It mm. says that it matches the smiley face. Okay, well, that also says it that something way. about you. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Never mind. Move on. Okay. Sorry. If the smiley face had hands, this would be them. <laughs> oh, now I uh, hate looking at it. Oh, I don't like <gasps> that version. I don't like that at all. What did you just say? Ew. <laughs> if the smiley face had hands. Oh. <laughs> Um, and then I use the melty. I use confetti emoji all the, the time. The confetti emoji is so fucking millennial. <laughs> when I saw this on your thing, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> who uses that? It's ugly too. Like, why does it look like that? Have. It's an ugly emoji. I, I know they always need to do better. Confetti emoji. <laughs> yeah, it's always been ugly. Well, also the <laughs> other one that has like the rounded thing on it. Like it's the worse. rounded confetti one. That one's worse. That one's worse. I agree. Yeah. They're both ugly. Like, if I'm celebrating, I'm sending you the little champagne glasses clinking. Because and that then, shit... Ugly. But the, the <laughs> champagne glasses are... Blah, 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 blah. The, champagne, <laughs> the champagne glasses clinking feels like drinking, and I don't drink, so... I, I don't drink either, else. but it feels I like know. a little, like, cheers to you. <laughs> yeah, I see where you're getting at, but I just associate it with alcohol. Um, and then I use the hands all the time, and I use the now the dead skull, but I use it when I feel that like something's kind of That is super Gen Z. Mean. Oh. <laughs> That's not how we use it. Wait, how do you I use know, it? No, you... You use it like dead laughing. I yeah, know how like you dead word laughing. But yeah. like I like will do XD for that because the skull, I feel like when it's Rar, like a mean XD. joke, <laughs> when it's like a mean joke, I'll put like dead. Okay. When it's like super oh. edgy walking the line. So I I felt like I was con- trying to conform to the skull emoji, but I can't do it. I felt like very millennial, like trying to trying to do it. Yeah, Fuck. I'm like I'm just I'm not. I'm gonna just do what I love. <laughs> That's self aware. That's self aware. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then the one that I use the most is the like the little so oh, smiley cute. face with the hands. Yeah, it's, it's so like, I'm you. Giving you a hug. <laughs> I love that emoji. <laughs> I think it is I, probably cringy, but I love it. So it doesn't why matter. Why is it cringy? It's a hug. I, I think love that. It, true Gen Z doesn't use any emojis at all. The way they text is all lowercase, no punctuation. I hate that. And it's crazy. <laughs> they, I, I was talking about this somewhere. Oh, yeah. and we write out hearts. Like with, if you look at Taya and I's texts, we like okay. actually type out. The I heart. wrote out hearts. Okay, for years. You're mm. like it was the youth that wanted me to use a fucking emoji heart. Um. Less than three was my go-to forever. <laughs> like, right. So, but it, everything comes back though. I don't think I know. the X but like when or you the say like, that, like equals and the hearts, I'm like, um, I wrote out hearts. <laughs> like, but we use very little emoji. Like, there's one emoji can't see. there. Yeah, we can't see it. Oh, we have to put it more towards the center. There's the just center. very little. Hello. There's just not a lot of emoji use here. I, I know. A I've little noticed. Bit. Yeah, there's a few oh, here. There's just some. Yeah. But like also, for so caps. long, I raged against emojis. And then like everyone was like, stop, just use an emoji. And now they're like, stop using emojis. And it just annoys me. Like, let okay. me live my life. Okay, wait, <laughs> PSA, use whatever fucking emojis you want. As long as this emoji brings you joy and you enjoy using it, <laughs> then fucking use it, okay? No one's stopping you. It's not cringy if you love it. And if you're texting your friends, you shouldn't care about your emoji use. The only time yeah. you should care about your emoji use is if you're texting someone you're interested in because a <laughs> lot of emojis are too little emoji. Like, there's, you know, you're saying things. I just, mm -hmm. like, live your emoji truth, okay? Fuck this shit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't yes. like when there's like fifty yeah. in a row, <laughs> but like when there's one emoji to like get fifty across in what a you mean, row, that's psychotic. Yes. Those are like people who were born like five years younger than me. We used to do like fifty in a row. I'd be like, what do you guys do? You do you guys remember the emoji text like during holidays that was like, "Sup, you turkey guzzling whores"? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> what? That's the only right use of emojis. You don't remember those? Those like text copy paste text that made the rounds and then was like sup you turkey guzzling whores if you get this text i've sent this to my 10 closest friends and if you don't oh. send it on you're gonna have bad luck for Chloe. 10 years you stupid see they, we got these in email emails form. we did get them in yeah email. I, I yeah chain emails <laughs> but like that's the best use of emojis i love that i love those I never send them, but I love receiving. Emojis didn't exist when we were getting them, so it would be like rainbow colors, like every line would be like a different <laughs> color. Like you will die if you don't forward this to ten people. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, so let's talk about. Okay, before we move on, yeah, I've noticed that Gen Zs like don't like to be excited in their text messaging. Like they don't love... use many exclamation points, so... and they don't use many uppercase letters i feel like okay yes i feel like and they do now i text the two of you in a way that's like i text my close friends and i'm like screaming or i'm all lowercase and you a lot used of a period and i was like is chloe mad oh fuck <laughs> yeah you Maybe. did use a period at one point i was like what's happening <laughs> punctuation what the fuck well it's because i'm texting like men old men so I have to use punctuation. When Chloe uses a period, I'm like, I did something wrong. <laughs> no, you have literally never done anything wrong. I have never been upset at you. I've never been mad at either of you. Period. Not once. <laughs> I have yet to be mad at either of you. Um, but yeah, I really oh, just don't. I did use a period. Oh, shit. When <laughs> was it? Earlier. When we asked you to be on this episode, I was like, she doesn't want to be on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just also texting a guy and like I was in period mode. Okay. When I text guys, I like use punctuation. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay. I think, wait, you want to know something? It is a sure tell sign that a man is a dirty whore if he has his lowercase like all lowercase all the time if a man oh. is texting you and it is all lowercase all the time 
fucking run. Yeah, that no, I and feel that too. upper thigh tattoos leave. No, Go away. And tattoos. the trifecta, the trifecta, upper thigh tattoos, all lowercase text and a mustache. You oh God. are going to have the worst sex of your life and he's going to break your heart. Leave. <laughs> Oh my god! That's gen- that only works with Gen Z, though. <laughs> I don't know the other men. Let's segue this into emojis <laughs> that have like alternate meanings now for Gen mm. Z, as compared to like what millennials would think that they are. Because I've seen some TikToks where like millennials are being lectured in the workplace by their Gen Z coworkers just to not use these ones anymore. <laughs> I just, I don't think like, I don't think the workspace though is the right place to do that. Like, no, yeah. they're not. It's not. But like, no, they were just, like, stop I think teaching they were doing your it for boss. comedy. Yeah. I'm like, stop but, teaching like, your boss slang. Like, but like, what was, so a brain emoji that she was mm. talking about. What does that mean to you, Chloe? Sucking dick. What the fuck? What? Why? Why? Because of balls? No, like brain. Like he, I get, like she gave me brain. Like she gave me head. What? Oh, head Lord. became brain. Brain. That's okay. So that's that's oh, what it is to me. My God. Also, like, who's using that? Like, who's I using don't know. the brain emoji? I don't know. But like, I would never think head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you guys! I have a story for tea time. Speaking of head, but okay, brain. Yeah, to me is just sucking dick, sucking cock. Oh my God. Okay, oh, and then the cookie. What does that mean to you? Is that vagina? I guess. I don't know. What's cookie to yeah. Gen Z? It wins horny. What? Why? Yeah. I didn't know I that know. one. I, I've I never. No one has ever used a cookie emoji yeah. to tell me that. But also I, I don't date Gen Z. <laughs> 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 no one's sending me a cookie emoji. I feel like, I mean, the only... Hor- like horny w- w- i think was eggplant and then it was peach and then it was like the little squirt oh emoji. yeah sorry yeah and now it's cookie and now it's cookie <laughs> what apparently according to this one gen Zer. <laughs> this one gen Zer. <laughs> i'm sure it's multiple gen Zers. i feel like yeah. she can come up with that oh, yeah my goodness. yes and then the upside down smiley face, like I totally feel this already, but it was like kind of like a passive aggressive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But also and like, I don't know who would use that without in a different way. Like how would you use it upside down? Why would you put it upside down smiley face? I think as a reaction to like tea that you got or like someone like maybe you're texting your friend oh. and you know what I mean? Like you're texting your friend and she says something like, oh, can you believe like that she said this and then you sent like a little you know not pleased i guess is the yeah. reaction like i use it when i'm like ooh, uh. <laughs> um, or like this happened to me today and it's not like a complaint but it's not like it's like a sarcastic smile like mm-hmm. um but if to me not knowing what this means um and if people are using it just as a smiley face that's so weird but like it's like the boomers with ellipses. I don't know if you have this with boomers in your life, but like boomers in my life will just be like, "I'm coming at six dot dot dot," yeah. or like, "You should do this dot dot dot." What mm-hmm. and dot 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 is the dot, passive dot, dot, aggressive dot. as fuck yeah. to me. Like, like, it's not, it, like, I mean, it feels like it's mm, unfinished. It feels like they're about to say something else. Oh, to me, it means. Mm, <laughs> Like, so, like, I can't come, dot, 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 is, like, I can't come, I fucking hate you. Like, you're a bitch. <laughs> like, so. the, I use the ellipses, but I use it in, like, a kind of a, I think in a fun way, where, like, I'll <laughs> use, like, little ellipses as, like, a, like, long pause of, like, a read between the lines, like, ooh, situation, but hmm. I don't know. Like, like so, like... <laughs> yeah, Nicole says my dad. <laughs> Wait, does he use the quotations around the dot dot? Is it an ellipse? <laughs> no, no, no. She's just quotating it. Oh yeah. my god. No, just two periods. Yeah. My aunt just... stuff will write stuff and just put like double periods at the end, ellipses at the end, and I'm like, what is what happening? Is that? Happy birthday. Dot dot dot. <laughs> what is that? That's crazy. 
And my dad will just throw like random colons <laughs> in like well, afterwards. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> that is psychotic behavior. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the ellipses, like, whenever I see it, I... It is passive-aggressive, like, though. And I know. I'm like, what are you doing? I use ellipses sometimes when I'm working with a client and they say something that, like, makes zero sense or annoys me. And I'm like, are you sure? That's, that's, that's the that's proper that? way to use yeah. it. Like, huh? Like, confused, that's, like, a nice way. But, like, when the boomers do it, it always comes off as passive-aggressive because, Wait, like, they don't know Nicole how to use it. Nicole just said something so cute and so funny, and I think it's true. My grandpa <laughs> loves doing subject lines <gasps> on yes. text. Do you guys remember when that was, like, an option on iPhone? You could, like, put a subject oh, line yeah. and have a text. Have an iPhone, so. That's so... <laughs> This was like a feature like six years ago. Calm down. <laughs> I got my iPhone two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that about her? Yeah, she was an Android user. So was I an for a very long time. Really I didn't get my time. first iPhone until uh, work. So 2018. 2022. <laughs> 2022. 2019. Yeah. <laughs> we were both Android users. Yeah, Katie says my grandma would always sign her text, love grandma, and so does my Nana. Mm-hmm. She'll be like, XO Nana. <laughs> Chloe's still on the fact that we <laughs> were Android users. <laughs> okay, they weren't with Verizon, and then we got used to droids and loyal to droids. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, Apple started to make me mad because they are exclusionary. Yeah, oh they God. are. They are. Oh, my God. Yeah, we had this talk on Millennial a few days ago, and I know, our TikTok and I went was... to the wrong side of the internet. So I've ahead. had so many rants and videos about this, and then Millennial was talking about, I was like, fuck Apple! <laughs> we were, like, talking about how they get annoyed and, well, with the green tech. Way. I just feel like, um, yeah, as a, as a content creator, though, and as, like, someone who does graphic design, like, Apple, unfortunately... It's because it's also compatible and it is better. But like at the end of the day, the I only like exclusively date men that have Androids. So, huh. yeah, because they're usually nerdier and we know that's how I, what I like. So hmm. interesting. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't know <laughs> before I got it, iPhone. And now I know when someone is green, but most people have blue. Well, I think it's so cool that you can change on an Android, like, the color of the text Mine was bubbles. pink. Yeah. Fuck yeah. that shit. Why can't I have that? You have to, like, jailbreak your iPhone. Do you remember when mm-hmm. that was popular? Oh, Why yeah. can't they just let me make my text fun? And I had, like, lots of different cool uh, ringtones and stuff yep. for the whole time. It was fun. Mm-hmm. It was hard to customize an iPhone now. Okay. All right. What's next? What's next? Um, we have to go through Chloe's emojis. Oh, um, we can. Mine are like a pretty millennial too, but I use the sparkles emoji an excessive mm-hmm. fucking amount. Like I think, <laughs> I think I just like put them. Wh- I love this I emoji. Yeah, it reminds me of magic. It does. It's so cutie, isn't it? So cutie. Yeah. I love it. And then yeah. I use the little double pink hearts. Um, mm-hmm. I use the little blushing emoji. Often when I'm mm-hmm. texting men, I use the little mm-hmm. eye emoji, the little, because I'm constantly like, mm, mm. The mean eyes. It's not mean. It's more like a what? Like a hmm? <laughs> it's not like side it, eye. Yeah, it is side eye. It's 100% side eye. <laughs> um, I use Oh the, my like, God. Oh, go ahead. Katie just mentioned ring back tones and I had a ring back tone. Yeah, so I did I. Was that like a music that would play? Yeah, I when had that too. Yeah. Mine was the ring. Yeah. Selena Gomez, A Year Without Rain. Oh. oh my God. Mine was Everybody Loves Me by One Republic. Oh my. I feel so sad. <laughs> forgot about One Republic. <laughs> I love One Republic. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, I use the like serene face one, the one that's just like, hmm. I know I use hmm. this for a lot. Like, it's honestly, like... Yeah, I've seen you use this Yeah, one. like, it's kind of just, like, my go-to, like, mm, like, I'm, like, I'm <laughs> at peace. Like, or I'll say something <laughs> really fucking bitchy and awful, and then I'll send the, like, mm, emoji. 
Uh, oh I also have God. the like zany like troll face. Um, I, the tongue sticking Yeah, out. I have the kissy face. I use the millennial laughing face, ironically. <laughs> what is wrong with this face? What, why do you it guys not like it? It is the most millennial emoji. It's just cringy. That's just because it was around longer. Yeah. She, there was okay, not many faces in the beginning. Now that I'm kind of looking at it, it's kind of cute. It is cute. Mm. I don't understand. Yeah, like I've I zoomed remember... in on it and it's just so happy. I oh. really campaigned to have a fangirl emoji and it was the heart eyes crying yeah. face. Uh, that would Because we sick. love something so much yeah. that it makes us cry. cry. You yes. you guys, I almost cried just now after you told me about the android. Um, I'm not sure why, though. <laughs> like, I genuinely was on the verge of tears. Okay, you have oh a fork God. and knife emoji. Why? Yeah, what do okay, you Okay, so the for? only reason I have a fork and knife emoji Eight? is because I've been, like, you know, inviting people to my birthday. And that's the emoji I'm using if they're coming to the dinner. So I'm, like, categorizing oh. people. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like well i'm not gonna oh lie like it's God. that's what i'm using oh right now gosh. wait christine are you coming to dinner or is you coming to i dinner? wish i could come no natasha might be coming to dinner. get down there yeah like another day i'd have to put bellamy in daycare no you're good down. you're good babe yeah. I, i'm not mad i just that's what i'm using it for this one <laughs> and then i have the shrug emoji because at the oh, end of the yeah. day i don't give a I fuck use that sometimes mm-hmm. whatever oh i use that more like i don't know <laughs> I, I use it as an like, I don't know. I also use it as like a whatever. Fuck off. Like, yeah. You. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. Are there any other secret meanings to emojis that you use, Chloe? Hmm. I don't think so. I like genuinely just like use way less emojis than I'm like most of the time. Yeah. Do you, like, have you been keeping up with, like, these new Gen Z words, like, like, giat? Oh, ga- giat. It's, it's like, yeah. What? You gotta, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it means yeah. ass. Wait, what? Ass? Yeah, yeah. G-H-A-T. Said, yeah. Yeah, people said it means, um surprise excitement or disapproval yeah that too well so it comes from god actually and it comes from aave which every yeah. slang does um but essentially it's like it was like someone was looking at this is the origin story i think but someone was looking okay. at like a fat ass and they're like god and they said yeah so yeah. it's yeah have you heard of um there's also like this meme slang that they use called skibbity which is like literally yes. just to troll millennials and gen z into thinking that they say weird shit what skibbity skibbity i just saw that when i was doing research i was like what the fuck skibbity <laughs> no it's like literally like a troll it, it i think it originates from like a twitch streamer or whatnot oh like phantom tax or whatever yeah phantom yeah tax. yeah that was from a streamer yeah like I, the that's streamers, like stealing food from streamers your friends. and twitch are like really kind of big with gen alpha the gen alpha youtubers like they're kind of the people that are setting the slang for them but again Have like you aave your... will always be the inspo yeah. for most things so mm-hmm. yeah have you had your first moment where, like, you heard a word and didn't know what it meant and you were like, oh, fuck, I got to know what that is? No. Like, like you feel a little old and out of it? No, you haven't had that yet? No. I think it's because okay. I work in social media and because it's, like, yeah. my job to know, I don't know. what's cool. Um, I worked in social media and oh, I didn't know what extra um, meant no, when extra No dropped. thorax, no glue. Um, no, do you guys, have you heard that? I Mm-mm, think that's no. what the phrase is. Um, no borax, no glue. It comes from slime YouTubers that say that there's <sighs> no way to make slime without having borax or glue. Yes, yeah, so it was no borax, no glue. And essentially it was like something's completely impossible. So that was like a TikTok slang phrase for a while. And the first time huh. I saw it, I was like, What? So I had to look oh, that so up. So you have had yeah, it. Yeah, I have. Yeah, had I feel it. like I had it at like 25. Yeah, That's no like borax, when... no glue. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Natasha, also, you know all my friends was? are over 30. Like, I can't stress this enough. So I have to actively try to try. be cool still. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what my first, I mean, I, I think it, I think it was bet. Um, mm. that one. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember Emma Books was like, I'm so extra. And I was like, what is extra that? was yours? Because you are yeah. so extra. Like, if I had to describe you in a word, it'd be extra. <laughs> and then I had to like be like, what is it extra, extra? Read all about it. Like, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katie um, said cap. Yeah, I didn't know what like no cap. Meant. Oh, yeah. No I mean, idea. like now there's cap, lots. no cap. Yeah. <laughs> But the first one, I was like, how do I not know what this is? <laughs> I mean, I like, there's like my favorites, you know, I'll stay, I'll keep saying them forever. Like touch grass. Like I love that one. Like I love <laughs> just telling people to go touch grass. Like that makes me that happy. I just, I just watched a whole video about like, you have some of these like aesthetics from Gen Alpha right now. Mm-hmm. I watched one of those too. Yeah. And, um, like how preppy is not what we think preppy is, but it's, what is no. preppy? it's, it's now like it's colorful, like colorful, lots of color. Yeah, yeah. Colorful, colorful girls um, who like with like the big crocheted sweaters and like so we're happy preppy. earrings. Yeah. So we are preppy. Like you but and their I. version of preppy. Yeah, because yes. our version of preppy was like yeah, Lacoste oh shirts yes, and, and like um, or like yeah, plaid, like tennis what's that? skirts. Yeah, and what's yeah. that um, brand? Lily Pulitzer and oh, yeah. Vineyard Vines it was like and J Crew. Yeah, mm-hmm. Peplum, yeah. the statement chunky necklaces. It was cool and to like be khaki preppy skirts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's not preppy anymore. And they used to wear like a headband. Like I would consider um, some of the stuff that. Not not like just in general, like they would put like that thin headband on mm-hmm. um, with their outfits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do love a, I do think there's always a place for um, headbands. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. and there then, is. But there was like a specific. Yeah, type. yeah, yeah. And then now we also have coquette, which I also fit into that aesthetic, yeah. mm-hmm. um, which is like the bows, oh, my, the lace. My, my outfit today is coquette. But I think mm-hmm. that's interesting because, like, that is a term that's always been a term. I mean, it's French, right? Yeah. And coquette is, like, flirty in, like, a specific way. Um, and my mom used to call me coquette, like, all the time. And it's interesting Aww. that it's become, like, a yeah a thing. A thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's always been, like, that Marie Antoinette, like, French girly Lolita style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then all right. Vanilla yeah. Girl. Oh, yeah. Vanilla okay that feels yeah aesthetic. i was about to say that feels like the gen alpha gen z version of the beige aesthetic the vanilla it girl it's just like yeah. that whole idea that like you look clean and you smell good and like you only wear neutrals yeah <laughs> okay yeah. i coined a term for my friend and i kind of want it to like blow up maybe someone <laughs> else already said it but she was like yeah like i don't know like my my outfits are like all beige and I was like no babe you have to rebrand and you have to make your aesthetic <laughs> slutty neutrals I love it slutty neutrals, slutty neutrals. <laughs> yeah like you're mostly neutrals sometimes you know you're a little not so neutral slutty. a little slutty yeah <laughs> but also that's but neutral wait actually slutty. that's an interesting thing like slut and whore and some of those words like have become much yeah. less offensive and I feel like they were really yeah. offensive when y'all were growing up like it was like yes it was like she's a slut yeah whereas like everyone, if my girl was like yeah oh my god you're such a slut I'd be like thanks babe like we wouldn't yeah. like it's now not offensive really demystified slut yeah. and that was happening like when I was in college we were like stop making slut I actually bad. I think that's interesting because A lot of slang does come from AAVE, but I do think that some slang has been popularized by the LGBTQIA plus community, specifically drag queens, and has become popular. Like, have Mm -hmm. you guys heard of Boots or, um, Mm -hmm. no, Um, Mm -hmm. but like calling people like dirty whores is like a love. Yeah. You know, that, that is also Katie's saying in the chat, like bimbo, like, yeah, Mm -hmm. that one has also been reclaimed, bimbofication, bimbo chic heard that one that was i get like called mean. that one all the time young yeah. <laughs> it's fine i have no issue 
Um, interesting. Yeah, Slot was oh, a big himbo. one that, like, really evolved. I love Himbo. Did you guys, like, jump on the Himbo train? Mm-mm. I just learned about Himbo, like, last year. Really? I love calling mm-hmm. millennial mem- men Himbos and then having them try to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right we're gonna wrap this up do we have anything that we want to add to this before we move into our merry kiss cliff let's do you have any tagging on here um do whatever you want be cringy mm -hmm. live your truth like this doesn't mean jack shit none of this means anything if you identify as a zillennial gen z millennial like literally just oh my god i never finished my thought when i was saying that theory that i had because we went into like a lot of other stuff but like i had this theory the other day that like that um gen z grew up with like all this millennial stuff in the media making fun of us so that when they got old enough to do it they were like ready yeah for for sure yes <laughs> i think that kind of we were like trained it, it was just to like be mean to you guys they were like oh yeah like and our pa- your parents were probably talking about it like <laughs> it's just the thing mm-hmm. so i think that kind of really led into the roast of us just being like we crossed a line from youth to old instantaneously <laughs> <laughs> Well, I also think, too, like, since millennials are also birthing Gen Alpha, like, we're now getting blamed for this generation and, like, the oh, iPad no. you guys kids are just never and gonna the have Sephora a break. barbarians. Like, we're just never going to, ha- we're never, like, going to yeah. have any slack. <laughs> We're, we're like constantly kind of trailblazing like this new internet world and everyone who's doing the thing first gets shit on. So that's what it is. We're the internet um, guinea pigs. So we'll be the internet guinea pigs for kids. <laughs> Having kids with internet. And then we were the internet guinea See, pigs growing up. I think it's going to go the opposite. And I think all of us are going to become crazy ass parents that like don't let our children touch screens. Touch. Which yeah. is like kind of where I'm at. Like... I think I'm yeah. going to be like, go outside, Montessori preschool, like wood, edu- like in the woods, which <laughs> education. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my friend who has a baby right now, she's being so careful about his screen time. Like he's not allowed to like look at the TV. So we've got like his little things that he sits in that face yeah. the same. I love where the TV is. Well, I, I love how parents are going to try because I know so many parents who've tried to have like zero screen time and then they like, always yeah, yeah, give it. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's just hard. And same thing yeah. with the fucking Stanley Cups, too. Like, I've heard so many stories of, like, after Christmas, like, girls going in and they don't have their Stanley Cup that, like, uh, and, like, going like back to school. Sign of like wealth. A, or, yeah. yeah. Ugh. So. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. That was a fun discussion. Lots of different directions we flew off in. And we're going to move on into Mary Kiss Cliff. Okay. Um, in celebration of my trip. <laughs> 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 to the Lord of the Rings homeland. Um, I have down Legolas, Aragorn, and Arwen. Who are you going to marry? Who are you going to kiss? Who are you going to cliff? Uh, marry Aragorn, kiss Arwen. I don't know who Aragorn is. And cliff Legolas. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know how I feel about blonde I feel men. Like I'll probably not this because I know him um, the you, most. And Aragon, I don't really remember him ever. So. You need to rewatch them because it's I, different. He's just the guy with the dark hair, like the he's longer hair. He's fucking sexy as he's hell. So sexy. Human. He's the human. Are you kidding me? You don't remember him? Yeah. He's like the one that oh. I remember. I liked him, I think. So I'll kiss him. Also, Arwen is so fucking sexy. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, just She's to so like, be in her presence. You look so much like Arwen. Thanks. Just I'm like, like, she's so woman. sexy. Do you know that you look like her? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I've been told my entire life. I I feel like the women in Lord of the Rings, you don't really get to know them at all. 
yeah. <gasps> it's not. Definitely Arwen is kind the of men. the only one you really, really get to know. I feel like. Well, um, yeah, this it's like only Arwen, Galadriel, and yeah. um, Aowen. And I feel like, honestly, you know Aowen more because she's mm-hmm. there. Right. But, like, it's not a story about women. <laughs> no, it's not no. a story about men. Yeah. Um, I am going to marry Aragorn. I'm going to kiss Arwen, and I'm going to cliff Legolas. Okay, same Z's. Sad. You also yeah. don't like blonde men. Hobbits are going to Isengard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Orlando Bloom. So. Oh, yeah. He doesn't look like Orlando <laughs> Bloom in that, though, in Lord of the Rings. Does that make sense? I mean, like him being blonde, does. like, is so jarring for me. Yeah, no, it is jarring, yeah. but, like, I got used to it, and I still see the Orlando Bloom now but in the beginning i was like Ugh. i'll take orlando <laughs> bloom as a pirate every time i love him as will turner oh my god <laughs> i really want to rewatch the pirates of the caribbean movies now mm-hmm. we should I am always we should do like a, a little <laughs> oh, that'll be fun yeah okay wrap up all right wrap it up oh my god i didn't thank the listeners in between our main discussion but we gotta take a second to thank the (laughs) listeners thank you all so much for being here we love it if you followed the podcast for free in your favorite podcast listening app so you never miss an episode and if you don't know we have a visual version of every single episode on our youtube channel youtube.com slash at those working fangirls where you can subscribe for free so you never miss an episode over there and we are a viewer supported podcast so we have a patreon with lots of fun perks and lots of different things for the different tiers available at the five dollar level which is called team jacob you get the show ad free which is great and you get our extra show after every episode at the end of it we have an extra show called fangirl tea time where we dig into more personal stories which is super fun we love our community over there And we offer a free seven-day trial to give it a go. See if you like it. So you could always sign up for that. No strings attached. And give all those things a whirl. Um, And we also offer an annual subscription with a 16% discount. So if you subscribe to the Patreon annually, you save like a month and a half's worth of um, money, I think. Yeah. (laughs) The monies. Mm -hmm the monies um but yeah we appreciate you all so much and there are links to all of these things in the show notes that is gonna be our show today we are gonna go record fangirl tea time have, like, our sh- naughty shit to talk about <laughs> Uh, we have so much to talk about because this was such a big break. Natasha has stories from New Zealand she hasn't told us yet mm-hmm. so oh then fuck my stories um, I just ex- we have to hear those <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I've got stuff too. We've got so much, so it's going to be a fun tea time. Chloe's got her naughty stories, naughty stories, so we're excited. Um, if you aren't following us on Instagram, so our social media is manned by Chloe and she does a fabulous job. It's fun. At those working fangirls. (laughs) Follow us Um, or else. Follow us there. Follow us on TikTok. Um, and our show is edited by Ricky McBrayer and Alex Polis and Jake Needham. And the music is by Cole Jenkins with vocals by Heather Traska. We release new episodes of Chapter Chat every Thursday and of the main show every Friday. I'm Christine. I'm Natasha. And I'm Chloe. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.